What you're about to see is some of the experience in my life from 1957 to 1969. I was fortunate to take some snapshots and Polaroid pictures, and I was really fortunate to have some friends take some movie film on me. Uh, this is not everything in my life. Uh, that's another story. <laughs> so enjoy it, take it for what it's worth, and uh, ciao. This is uh, September 1st, 2004. Thank you. Well, before we had any thoughts of building any kind of race car, we used to go go karting. We found a place at Canarsie, Brooklyn, in the old army barracks right there in World War II. Well, naturally, they were gone now, but the, the streets were still there, and we used to go around there on Sundays and, uh, and race. Uh, we'd go around the blocks, and uh, everybody pitched in, but we're trying to keep things early, but there was a lot of mishaps. Well, we really got hurt, but there was a few scary moments there. And, uh, there was no helmet law then. There was some of us, uh, you know, wear them, but some of them didn't. Uh, and they go pretty fast. I mean, uh, the size of the streets there. 25, 30 miles an hour is nothing to joke at, you know. Well, in 1959, I had a 33 Ford two-door coupe with an Olds engine in it, three carburetors with a Paxson supercharger. When we first went there, I had the number 666 on the door, but they wouldn't let me use that, so they changed it to 555. The old 33 Fords were called suicide cars because the doors opened from the front instead of the back. So if the doors opened while you were driving, they would fly open. These are some pictures of me and my best friend Ronnie. Uh, plus, we won a lot of trophies though that time, too. Benny's Speed Shop in 1962. These pictures were taken about in around 64 and on. I did a lot of Volkswagen uh, body work those days. Sometimes I ended up with uh, Volkswagen floor panels and stuff that uh, chassis that I used to make for dude buggies that the bodies were no good anymore. And, uh, you know, being a speed shop, I was involved in all kind of making everything, you know, from uh, motorcycles and uh, dune buggies and uh, mini bikes and 
whatever, you know what I mean? We used to make uh, all, all stuff that had anything to do with speed. Including crazy things like this, you know. I should have my own exhaust head as myself. Well, about 1964, I got the urge to build a dragster. Plus a little help from my best friend, Captain. Started out with a drawing on the floor, and uh, then it progressed from there. And naturally, a lot of these papers, pictures were taken at night, and uh, there were a lot of those. This is the one with the chassis with the engine, uh, and there was no engine in it, <laughs> and, and then the, uh, there's one with the engine in it. Uh, at first the fuel tank was put in the nose, and uh, you know, and then I didn't, at the time, I didn't know that was not going to work out, but now I changed it. I had an 80, a 283 punched out to 331 cubic inch uh, engine, Chevy engine, with hillboard injection. The engine was mounted midway back with a Corvette rear end with independent suspension. The car was made out of aluminum and weighed about 1,200 pounds. And then, like I said, then I positioned a fuel tank in the rear. You know. This is my friend Cappy uh, taking a pose. He was a great inspiration to me with this drag set. This is Mike Tui taking his dream ride. This is Frankie, one of my workers, taking a pose outside. I think this was the only color picture I had. And this is Jerry and Cappy in front of the shop, posing before the first race day. Let's first voyage to Atco Dragway. <clears throat> Uh, Jersey Turnpike. Except we had a little problem with one of the wheels. And there's Frankie with the tow car. Now we're all contemplating what to do. Well, we got it down pat though. We finally settled it out. And we're back on, we're back on the road again. Here's the old Ford. Yeah, we finally made it. These are all our pit crew here. Santa's helpers. And there we are. It's trying to fit me up. Well, we got going. We're ready to run. One problem, it didn't start. We kind of left the uh, injector balls and the injectors. Nobody seen it. That was the first disaster. And here we go. Uh, help us getting lined up for the run. It's a crowded day that day. There we go. If you can see, there's little ball, red balls in the injectors. I don't know if you can notice. There they are there. Didn't want to start. Of course, when you're sitting in front of the engine, 
you don't realize what's going on behind you. And we finally figured it out, and here we are, ready for a run. And here she goes. Nothing spectacular, but we were running. A lot of cars there too. A lot of good cars. There's old Don Gallus. It's in his early days. He smoked them tires all the way down the track. Here we are, West Hampton Dragway. A few motorcycles are there. A lot of sports cars. pitch that trailer and everybody looking around see what's going on there's a gray ghost San Biondo. And uh, here we go. One of our many runs. And there they are coming to get me. There's Eddie Sanzo. Little red wagon. There's Jack Marco. There's the little Willies. And this guy had to get his car to the end no matter how he did it, and he had to push it. And he pushed it. Of course, we all waited patiently for him to get to the end of the track, but he made it. There's Vinny Tanatoli, Ita Transmission. Jack Merkel again. Triumphs around the top, then. Here we go again. That was a good run. There I am at West Hampton. And there we are making our run.
We got a few runs in that day. And here's Eddie Sanzo again. Car driving license in 1964 West Hampton. Then in 1969, I needed a new one when I went to Atco. Well, in 1969, when I changed the car again, this time with a new engine, a uh, 383 cubic inch Chevy with a 671 supercharger. I shortened the chassis, new fiberglass body, and a new driver line. We ended up bringing the car over to West Ham to set it up, never get it to uh, run on the track, unfortunately. Making a trial run on the side road, he almost ran into another car going the other way at me. We both ran off the road into the sand and we wrecked my front end. This is Mike Tuohy and Billy Kenny and me setting up the fuel injection before the accident. But we never ran the car again after that. Brought it back to the shop and then had it sit there for about a year before selling it to somebody with great, great hopes. How was that little trivia? They say if you have your life to live over again, you would, and I would. I have no regrets. I enjoyed my life, and it's still a lot to go yet. So this is just part of it. So if anybody asks you what's new, Give a story about your life. Ciao.